What would you say if I told you that today we were going to get the most powerful item in the entire game of Minecraft, the beacon? Well, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna share a lot of beacon facts here with you, some that you probably don't know, actually some that I didn't even know. And I've done this a couple times already, which is kind of fun. And you are going to find these things very useful. And we're gonna cover some of the basics too, things like getting haste to and why that's so important, uh, why you should set up beacons at your trident killers, etc., etc. And in case you missed it in the last episode, we went over how to actually get the main ingredient to make a beacon, the nether star. So make sure you go back and Check that one out if you need help figuring out how to spawn a wither and how to kill a wither. But for now, we need to go craft our beacon. And to do that, we need some obsidian. I'm actually, I'm gonna need a little bit more than that. I'll show you why in a second, but we also need some glass, just regular old glass, which I also don't, I'm not very prepared today. Okay, here we go. Go to our crafting table and we see the recipe right here. Three obsidian, five glass, and another star in the middle. We're gonna use all of them to make five beacons. Now, one cannot just simply place a beacon down on the ground and expect it to work because it doesn't work that way. The beacon needs to be fed and it needs a nice home. It needs to be fed ores. So you would pop that into the ore slot here. And you can even see here, nice little interface that shows you all of the different ores that you can use to power the beacon. And those same ores can be made into ore blocks that the beacon will need to sit on to make a base. So it has to be one of those five different types of ores. Like you don't see copper on the list, for example, copper will not work, has to be one of those five. Now, what doesn't matter is which ore you use in terms of the effect of the beacon. So if I go in here and I use a netherite beacon base and use netherite to power it, doesn't affect the way the beacon works at all. It works exactly the same. So get whatever is the easiest for you to get to make your base out of. Now, like I said, beacons require to be set on a ore block base. And I'm gonna put together the things I need for that ore block base now. And I'm actually, I'm gonna make a few different things for you guys so we could properly go over all of your options. So behind me here, we have the four different sizes of a beacon base that you can have. Now, if you're as rich as I am, you can use all of those sub to proud diamonds to make sub to proud diamond blocks and you can make your beacon bases out of that. But like I said earlier, it doesn't matter what you actually make the base out of as long as it's one of the ore blocks, right? And these different tiers of beacon bases will give you different options to choose from that you can do for the like power you get from the beacon base. So we're going to go over these in order real quick. So first of all, for your tier one beacon here, you can activate either speed or haste. Speed simply makes you run faster. Haste makes you mine faster. To activate, all we have to do is drop one of these different ores or ingots into whatever you want to call them <laughs> into the beacon here in this little slot right there. It tells you right here which ones are acceptable and you select the effect that you want. And you'll see on the right hand side, there's a secondary power. You cannot use that yet until you're at a higher beacon level. You have to be all, all the way at the highest tier to use that. And you can even see what different tiers do here. So if we want to do speed, for example, we get the check box right here. And now, as you can see, we run a little bit faster. We have that speed effect showing up in the right hand side of the screen or on PC. If you hit the Z button, it shows your effects there. Also worth noting, you can stop a beacon's effect by just blocking its sky access. For the beacon to work, it has to have access to the sky. So if I were to simply put a block above it like this, this beacon is now stopped, it's deactivated, it will not give its effect any longer. We'll give an example of the haste effect later because we're gonna save that for the final stage of the beacon. But moving along to stage two beacon, we gain access to resistance and jump boost. Resistance makes it so you take less damage from all sources. It's great to use in a case where you know you're gonna be fighting in a very tight area. I've used it against the wither in the past. It works really good there. I don't know how much it's gonna save you against the warden. I haven't tried that yet. I don't know anybody that has, but I'm assuming it'll probably help out a decent amount there too. The jump boost will simply just make you jump higher. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the first stage of jump boost here, which will activate like this will provide us enough jump boost to make it over a 1.5 block height, which is what a fence would be. So as you can see, we can jump on top of the fence when we have jump boost stage number one. 
Now, were you to activate jump boost stage number two or jump boost level two, you would be able to jump up a two block high height as opposed to a one and a half or the normal player height, which is one. Moving along to stage three here, we'll drop a diamond into this one. This gives us the ability to get strength. Strength just makes you hit mobs harder. It, it adds a decent amount of power. So again, fighting something like the Wither or the Warden or even the Dragon, if you wanted to, although the Dragon's a little risky because the Dragon can fly through blocks and delete them. The strength will help you out quite a bit with killing those types of mobs. Unfortunately, in my, my opinion, the like combat based effects, very limited use because first of all, the mobs in Minecraft are kind of weak anyways. And second of all, even if you are like doing things with mobs, usually you're you're moving around. You're not in just one place or you have some system to kill them like trident killers or something. So overall, not that great, but it definitely can work. And lastly, we have the stage four beacon here. This allows you to add secondary powers. So you click your first power and you click your secondary power to boost it to the next level. Also, it does add a new power that's not available, regeneration. Kind of like we did in the Wither episode, we drank a potion of regeneration. This will regenerate your health over time. So if you were to use beacons to try to fight the Wither, and I am going to say beacons, because I'm going to show you how to do multiple beacons really efficiently, then you would want beacons to give you resistance and resistance to strength and strength to and regeneration all together. But what I want to show you first before we do that is haste and haste to. This is probably one of the most overpowered things in Minecraft. We're going to go ahead. We're going to drop a gold ingot in here to activate haste to. And I am going to place down some blocks here. And haste to will give you the ability to insta mine. Now, just to kind of show you the mining speed, when we do not have haste to active, we're going to put that on there, deactivate the beacon and wait for the effect to wear off. You see, it's got another 10 seconds before it's gone. Your normal mining speed, of course, is pretty quick, right? Not too bad. But getting ourselves that haste to effect, we can insta mine which is gonna be obviously a lot faster. Insta mining is great for clearing a large area underground, um, whether it be some type of cave base you're doing, the underside of a farm where you're gonna put the storage, or if you just need a lot of cobblestone or stone or different like stone based blocks down below, haste two is a must, but I have more that you can do to your beacons than just this. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but to have more than one beacon active at a time, you don't have to actually build two of these bases because what you can do is just expand the size of this one beacon right here and the easiest way to do that is just take your blocks that you're going to use and expand out on one side now if we put a second beacon right here we can have two beacons active at the same time so i could get say jump boost two on that one and speed two on this one and as you can see i can now run and jump incredibly fast as i have two beacons giving me power as opposed to just one beacon giving me power now the cool thing is, is you can infinitely do this right i could expand it this way and now i could have three and four beacons all from one base that is just a little bit larger than the base before. Now, I have a few other interesting things that you could do with your beacon as well. In fact, you should know, first of all, while you can't put a solid block over top of a beacon beam, you can put a transparent block, a partial block over top of a beacon beam, and the beam will still go through. So if you want to hide your beams decoratively for some reason, you could definitely do that by putting something like these slabs over top, trap doors, anything that's not a full solid block will work. Not only that, but these beacon beams, you know, the, the lights there, I mean, they're okay. They're kind of cool looking, but they're not super pretty, but you can change the color of the beam light with glass. As you can see, we have different lights now coming out. And actually, not only can you do that, you can do a mixture of different colors to get pretty much any combination of colors possible. I could put this black on top of this green and then make that color darker. This allows for some really interesting color combinations of which I have one for you right now. Let me get it together. Okay, so the cool thing that I found out is if you go to the Minecraft Wiki, there's a color picker there. And that color picker, when you go to the beacon beam section, will tell you the color combinations to make different colors from the color picker. Now, my logo has a specific hex key to it for the color red that I use. So I looked at that hex key and we found that color red. So we're gonna make that together. I don't even know if this is gonna look accurate or not, but I'm curious to see. We start out with pink, pink again, then we go orange, then we go red, red, 
and red. And if we step back and take a look, well, you, you do see the color change as it goes. But that's it. That's Prowl Red right there. That's pretty awesome. Super cool how you can do that to get these different tones. But don't worry, that's not all. We have some more important things to go over, but I just wanted to show you guys that because I found it to be pretty cool. We need to talk about some things with this, such as the range and how that range extends, the best place to put your beacon, et cetera, et cetera. And I want to show you a couple of really good uses for your beacon that are practical. First of all, it's the range of your beacon. Now, the range varies on the like size of your base, meaning like, or I guess your tier, right? We're at tier four, and we're only going to talk about tier four range, but just know as you go smaller than tier four, the range of the beacon actually gets smaller as well. Well, we're going to judge this with, let's say, haste two. And the effect can reach 50 blocks out. So I'm just going to go out 50 blocks in this direction from the base. Here we go. This block right here is 50 blocks away from that beacon beam. If I go one more block to right here, we should see that haste effect stop refreshing and start wearing off, which it is. If I move one block closer, there it goes, it refreshed. So 50 blocks out, this is how far away you could be from your beacon. And if I'm correct, that distance is a square as opposed to a circle. And yes, we went 50 blocks that way, 50 blocks this way, and it extended out both directions. Now that, that distance is true for down as well. The beacon can extend down by 50 blocks too. But here's the thing, in terms of a vertical height, the beacon beam or the beacon effect extends all the way up to world height. So we can actually go like all the way up to the top of the world, really far away from the beacon, and we can still get the effect from it. As you can see here, I'm really high up in the world. We can't even actually see the beam anymore. It won't render, which is one thing that kind of sucks about the beam on Bedrock Edition is you can't really see it from very far, but we're way up here in the sky and we're still getting the effect of the beam, which means if you're going to be putting this in a more permanent location and you're not putting it somewhere for the looks, you probably want to put it all the way down at the bottom of your world and just make sure you dig out that sky access so the beam can reach up to the sky. And while I dig myself down here and I'm talking about sky access, one thing that you should also know is even though the nether does not technically have a sky, the beacon does still work in the nether. You just have to dig up the like quote unquote sky access all the way up to the bedrock at the nether roof and it will then work perfectly fine even though the beam is going into bedrock. So quick recap of the beacon. First of all, you have four different beacon base sizes that give you different effects. The effects are speed, jump boost, strength, resistance, haste, and regeneration. The highest tier beacon will give you a level two of all of those effects except for regeneration. The ore blocks you can use to make the beacon as well as the ores you can use to activate the beacon are iron, gold, emerald, diamond, and netherite. The beacon does require sky access and you can change the color of the beams. And it has a range of 50 blocks out in each direction, left, right, forward, backwards, and down. Except for going up, the beacon effect will reach all the way to build limit. Now, practical uses for the beacon. Let me go sleep here and I'm gonna show you a few of them that you're gonna to wanna to use a beacon for right away. All right, here is effective use number one. We're gonna build a beacon base right here. Haste, haste two. Now I'm gonna tell you right now, here's a little difference between Bedrock Edition and Java Edition. On Bedrock Edition, for whatever reason, it works to do uh, haste on trees to chop them, whereas on Java Edition, it does not. But if I wanna chop trees down really fast, Super easy to do on Bedrock Edition because you just get a haste beacon going and you can very easily go through and clear trees and get a whole lot of wood in a very short period of time. Extremely satisfying and extremely useful. Effective use number two. I'm going to go against conventional wisdom here and I'm going to dig a hole straight down. And once you get down here, you can dig away. And while you probably don't need a lot of stone, this is also a great way to just dig out a big area to get yourself a lot of andesite, a lot of granite, a lot of diorite. All of these things are really, really, really nice to get. Now you could do it the way I just did it here where I just put the beacon down here and then I'm digging out around it. Um, if you're really gonna dig a big area, what you'd probably wanna do is put your beacon down and then start from up high, like all the way up at the top ground level and then start digging your way down because you'll leave yourself a lot more space to dig. But this is great. And actually this is something I'll probably end up doing maybe in some of my off camera time because I really do need a decent
decent amount of andesite, granite, and diorite, because I don't have a lot of it. So to have that in surplus for building different things throughout the rest of the season here will probably be a pretty nice thing to do. And I have another one here directly below the general mob farm where we like to AFK. For this one, the effect I'm most interested in is the regeneration. We're gonna give ourselves resistance and regeneration. This will make us take less damage from mobs that have thorns and will make us regenerate health. So when we AFK here, let's say overnight, we won't wake back up or log back into the world and, and be dead. So now if I turn this farm on, I don't have to worry about it. I can literally leave myself AFK here forever and I will never like take any significant damage and die. And as far as beacons are concerned, that's all I have for you today. The most powerful item in all of Minecraft. And now between last episode, you know how to get it. And this episode, you know how to use it. You guys are ready to get beacons of your own. Have you ever gotten a beacon before? Sound off down in the comments section below. Let me know. Are you going to get one now if you've never got one before? I'd like to know that as well. If you'd like to support a channel, please consider becoming a channel member. You do get these episodes a day early as well as explainers to my tutorials. And make sure you click that like button on this video. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, click that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate you guys. I'm going to wave my sword in your face now. And I'll see you next time. Bye.